there this is Rob at reason101.net and I am here to showcase um, a little bit of a, a different type of tutorial for you um, this does have to do with the Kong drummer um, and basically it uh, it touches upon um, or it expands upon what James Bernard was talking about in one of his tips I think it was week 27 or 28 Anyway, it was his first Kong tutorial where he was showing how the chunk trig feature works. And, um, and it was a great tutorial. I really liked it, thought it was excellent. Um, he's got some amazing tips. But one thing that I wanted to expand upon this, and one thing which I don't think he really went over, um, was the idea of uh, triggering exclusive um, pads. And in other words, um, what this means is if you have one drum, which is the, uh, the Rex that I loaded here, and if you have it assigned to both um, pad one and pad two, as it is here, you've got drum number one. So it's the same Rex loop that's being triggered by both of these pads. Well, what's gonna happen is when you press it and you start playing them, and let me see if I can just turn this up a little bit. Okay, so you start playing them. Well, as soon as you hit the other pad, what's going to happen is it's going to stop the first pad from being triggered. It's almost like um, creating a, a mute group, um, kind of like this. Uh, so, one way you can get around that, if you want both of them to trigger w exactly when you touch them, what you can do is you can copy this same Rex loop into both these pads. So now when you're playing them, I don't know if you can necessarily hear that, but they're playing on top of each other when you press them. Okay, so as opposed to one starting and stopping the other, you can play them both together and they'll kind of overlap if, you're, if you press them. So how do we set that up? Well, the only thing you have to do uh, is instead of creating the pads, instead of assigning the same drum to both pads, you just assign the same Rex loop to both pads. So you've got um, drum assignment one, drum assignment two, and then you're playing basically the same pad, but um, pad one is only triggering the first part, and then pad two is triggering the second part. So it's exactly the same as James Bernard outlined in his tutorial, except that where he's basically assigning one Rex loop and then assigning it to both pad one and pad two, all I did was just copy it from one to the other. So let's just show you how that's done. First, uh, let's create a Kong device. Let's open up the drum programmer. Uh, let's go for the uh, nurse Rex looper. Load up your loop. Okay, and now what you're gonna do is you're going to copy this. So you're gonna copy the drum patch, go to the second pad, paste the drum patch. Okay, now on your first drum patch, what you're gonna do is, um, well, you're gonna chunk trade both of them. So set that up. And then the first pad is going to pay, play the first part. And then your second pad over here is going to play the second part. And that's all there is to it. And that's exactly what you need to do. So just to expand on it, it just depends what you want to do. If you want them both to, to stop each other when you, when you press the pad, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to follow James Bernard to the letter and you're going to just use one uh, one loop and you're going to assign the drums to that same loop just like this. And they're both going to be assigned to chunk trig and this is what it's going to look like. If you don't want to do it that way, then just copy one out and then um, you've got one pad playing one half of it, you've got the other pad playing the other half, and that's all there is to it. So I hope that tip helps you out, and I uh, hope it helps you work on uh, some other innovative ways that you can use Kong. 
That's it for me. And uh, again, come visit me at reason101.net. Thanks a lot for your time.